Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not dead. <laughs> I thought that the first time I played, uh, but she just knocks you out for, I guess, to build tension for the scene. Never really understood it, but she knocks you out and drags you down the stairs and leaves you to wake up just so she can walk back in on you. Uh, so it's hard to say what's going through her mind. I don't know if she's, her humanity's still fighting the creature that she's become or what. And look at her face, like it just, oops, oof. She can kill you in one punch, too. She's nasty like that. So we can't kill her. All we can do is just knock her down. And that's it. Because uh, she is, she's almost like this game's nemesis. Um, you know, after Nemesis came out, a lot of people really loved the, f the idea of having a, re a relentless pursuer. And uh, a Nemesis was such a good one. So I think what they wanted to do was they wanted to add something like that for this game. So Lisa pops up now and again um, and kind of pursues you. But, uh, oh. Yep. All right, so here's what we're going to learn, you know, kind of about a traitor. Even though we're, Jill's already, I think, she, you know, she's no dummy. I think she's already been suspecting you, Jill? Uh, Barry a little bit. Is that voice Enrico's? You're alive. Stop. Are you with anybody, Jill? No, but why? <sighs> the stars are finished. Someone is a traitor. Umbrella set us up. <laughs> so this is a this is a really interesting Enrico! question I have here because I feel like, and the way they showed the boots and stuff that that was probably Wesker that shot Enrico because I don't think Barry would and I can't remember how they handled that in the novel um, I think it was Chris that came across Enrico in the novel and him and Rebecca and the, and Wesker you know shot Enrico from behind them and why Wesker just wouldn't shoot Jill at that moment either that also makes sense to me too because Wesker it needs at least one person alive to face the tyrant because he needs the combat data of the tyrant and so he needs to because the hunters and everything they have already killed other you know scientists and researchers and so i think he's the one that shoots enrico because I, I don't think barry would i think because once we learn what barry's situation is i could see him tearing pages out of a book you know to keep it you know from leading to umbrella and, and getting jill you know suspicious of anything i could see him doing that but uh i can't see him um actually shooting a, a fellow comrade Ooh, snakes you gotta watch out for those things too because they they do lunge at you and bite you and they will poison you and it's a real pain in the butt because there is not an abundance of blue herbs in this game and blue herbs are the only things that will uh help a uh a snake bite or a poison bite. I think I, maybe the health sprays do too. I can't remember. I, I'll be honest with you. There's there used to be rewards for not using health sprays, so there was a time where I, I never did use them. Like I, I'm so used to not using them. You know, the really heartbreaking thing. I forgot to point that out. Back the guy that hung himself. If you read if you read that letter that I that I that he had that I opened up there, it talks about him saying he's sorry to like the person he loves, uh, Linda. I think her name is, and he's you know saying how. How he's sorry that he is taking his own life, but I guess because everyone else is infected, and, and I think he might have been infected, he just felt it would be the best thing. But I think he actually can fall. <laughs> like I think if you you can trigger something or or something where the the noose will break, and then he'll um, he'll like hit the ground and, and get up, and he'll come after you. So it's pretty crazy. Although I always wondered that if his if his I think in the movie they established in Resident Evil the movie, if you sever the top of the spinal column, it will um, kind of, you know, kill the zombie. So like snapping their necks, it detaches like all the the nerves and connections going to their brains. Uh, so it'll it'll shut them down. I don't know if that always applies. I know destroying the head obviously in the game 
you know, will kill a zombie, obviously, but, um, but I, I, snapping the neck, you don't really get the chance to do that in the game. So I, I don't know if, if that guy hanging, if he, um, if his neck snapped from that, I would, or if he just suffocated, maybe his neck is still intact. Um, so maybe that's how he can get up. <laughs> you know, Technic, I missed your, uh, your, your emojis and your faces. Cool thing about that puzzle is if you screw it up, you can uh, go back out, walk up the ladder, and uh, and you can um, reset it. So uh, I like that this game has that. So we're, I mean, I mean it has to because otherwise you have to like quit, reload a save, or something like that. And the game, the game wants you to, to beat it. <laughs> it doesn't want to throw too many obstacles at you. Here we go. Our, these are codenamed Neptune. Of these creatures. Chris. Chris, stop! No! Richard. Yeah. Chris kind of looks like a like a an idiot here. Um. Because of uh, not seeing oh shit, not seeing a giant shark coming at you. Shit. All right. All right, here we go. This activates the puzzle. Boom, and this Neptune is not happy about it. Emergency. Unknown source of pressure detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. All right, so what do we got to do? We got to go... All right, so we got to release the safety. Is that over here? Yep. All right. I mean, I think we go back over here. And then this is only going to shut halfway. Yep. And then we got to go release uh, the pressure, so valve one. All right, we got to come over here. Valve one. We gotta go back. We gotta do everything again. Release the safety. All right. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. Hopefully this works. Yes. All right. That wasn't so bad. I'm glad. I I knew once I started it, I would kind of remember. Um. And then now we gotta go drain. The lizard. Ha! No, we gotta drain the pool. All right, water is completely drained. All right, here we go. Whew. I'm. I know. I. It looked like I was away from the wall. I mean, I was away from the wall there. I've hugged the wall before, and it does work. I mean, I, I should have done that actually, but I've caught, I've been caught on that corner before, and that's a uh, that always sucks. I hate that. Um, I hate dying because I got caught on that corner, so I, I tend to take the risk of um, of you know stepping away from the wall a little bit. That was a little closer to comfort than I would have liked, but uh, but we got we made it. We made it. Which is cool. And now we're going to fight the Black Tiger. Which, don't let the name fool you, it is a giant spider. This thing is insanely cool looking. I'm not a fan of spiders, but... It is cool looking. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh man, there's a trying those stuff, dude. Oof. All right, are we poisoned? Yep. So that's why we brought the mixed herb.
Oh, you I'll be quiet me. for a second. You okay? You didn't come save me, Rebecca. You suck. But Richard, he's. Haha, <laughs> Unitechnic in the in the chat says your soul is mine. Yeah, that's true. I <laughs> Shang Tsung, his sorry. famous line said a couple times. It's my fault. I should have watched out for him. I found a pharmaceutical room. I think I can come up with something useful. I'll be there. Uh, Final Pie asks, "Do okay. I play games on the PC at all?" You know what? I don't. Um, I used to be a big PC gamer, actually. Um, I had a, my own computer that I, my friend, a couple friends helped me build years ago. It was like over a decade ago or so. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm... Oh, you know what? Yes. Cool. Now I can get those bullets. Um, so I used to play like... A, oh, what, what did we play? Um... Um, I'm, well, I, well, I don't know why I keep thinking the words Call of Duty. That wasn't what we played at all. Um, Counter-Strike. We used to play Counter-Strike and Quake and Unreal Tournament. Chris, you're alive. My words exactly. Where's Jill? Thought you were with her. Yeah, I know. We got separated. I see. Anyway, we better find a way out of here before we turn into zombie food. Got any suggestions, Wesker? We should get a better grip on the situation. There must be areas still to be explored in that other mansion. Chris, I want you to check them out one more time. I'll continue my investigation here. Sure thing. <laughs> I always thought, I mean, that's where I think if I was like a filmmaker, I would, that's the kind of fan service I would do is, um, if I was making a Resident Evil movie, I would I would throw a tofu reference in there somewhere. Krista Brad, can you um, hear me? Brad. But yeah, to tofu. That's funny. That was hard Damn. to beat. I remember um, back when Resident Evil Two came out, and I unlocked Hunk and Tofu, uh, and and I've been playing that. Like I would have, I would have really liked to. Uh, like well, Tofu was. I mean, I would have liked to play a game as Hunk. There was rumors for a while that there was going to be a game coming out where you played as Hunk working for the Umbrella Corporation. I always wondered, if, like, when they were I'm saying they were going to remake this game. You too, Jill. I was kind of curious because one of the popular things about Resident Evil 2 was the zapping system, quote unquote, that they called it, um, which was if you like you did something in Claire Game A, then in Leon Game B, like it would already be, be done, or you know, or or, or it would out. it would already be affected in some way. Like if you if you I'm trying to think of an example. But yeah, if you did something in Claire's game, theoretically it was supposed to, you know, have something in Leon's game where you're like, Leon's like, oh, it's already done. I don't need to do it because Claire did it. Um, the there are some things you got to do, solid. like you got to get the, still got to get the, the handle to turn the valve and, and spray the water on the helicopter. Like Jill, there's still things you got to do in both versions. But the theory was that, you know, day. one would affect I'll the other when you played A to B. And I was okay. wondering if they would, when they said they were going to remake this game, if they would do that. If it was like, hey, all right, instead of doing the partner trapped in the, you know, basement thing um, of, this, of the lab, what if, um, you know, what if, like, there's a, Le a, a Jill game A and a Chris game A and, a, you know, and, and, a, and a version of B of both theirs. And then that way it would do something similar to the zapping system. And I, I, I was wondering if they would do that, but uh, they, obviously they didn't. They stuck to the original formula, which was, you know, you can go, you can choose to go save your partner um, at the end if you wanted to. They hired the, oh, come on, I, I said turn. You're an idiot. I'm talking to me, not Jill. She's, she's innocent here. Um... 
but they hired those guys and they brought them on to be part of the team to help remake Resident Evil 2, which I think is really cool. I mean, you know, there's a, we live in a world now where Kickstarters are a thing and and uh, and, and fans can find the means and money. Uh, uh, by the way, Barry, total jerk for doing that. So he didn't sabotage the the um, elevator like like that happened in Chris's game, but he did totally leave us behind like a total butthole. Um, I think it was Jeff Johns told this story. He used to work for Richard Donner, who you know made the Superman movies and and a lot of other great films. Um, I'm a big fan of Richard Donner and Jeff Johns. And Jeff Johns used to be his assistant. And Jeff one day was told a story once where he was on set of uh, some movie they were filming, and uh, like a lighting or a grip guy came up to Richard Donner and was like, "Hey," um, uh, and they they couldn't figure out how to like frame this scene or do something in the scene and uh and this lighting guy or grip guy came up and said hey what about this and he came up with a suggestion and richard donner was like yeah you know what that's a great suggestion we're gonna do that and then so he he started you know setting up the scene and telling everybody to you know set up for what that guy suggested and jeff johns was like you know he's a young younger guy at that point and uh and was like are are we gonna actually do that like are you gonna actually listen to that that grip suggestion and Richard Donner's like, yeah, of course I am. He's like, you know, we're working in a collaborative effort. Um, it doesn't matter where an idea comes from. If it's a good idea, when you're working in a collaborative effort, if it's a good idea, you should do it. And he goes, and I think what that guy said was a good idea. And I, I always like that, that story. And um, and it's right, because he's right. It takes, it takes like a thousand people to make a movie. So um, to ignore a suggestion, um, is just the height of ego. I mean, that's just your ego. Uh, but to actually hear someone who has, whether it's good or not, I mean, at least hear them out and decide for yourself. Um, and in that case, you know, Richard Donner, they went with it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and here we go. We get the introduction to the, the hunters. And I think they're like the M one twenty nines or one twenty ones or something. I can't remember their code. Oh, shoot. Whew. That was close. Yeah, okay. So this... Just gotta push it into place. I think it does all the work for me. Yep, cool. So this is where we're gonna come into the, the Trevor family again, which is, you know, a much more reoccurring series of events and themes and story plot points in this version. Because uh, there's this hole in the ground. In the old version, you would just jump down into it, which we're gonna take that leap of faith, get a book here, and uh, and then you're going to see what's on the other side of uh, of this uh, this camera angle. <laughs> In one second, let me uh, let me open this up and get the crest out. All right, so we got no inventory slots. So this is going to suck when we get down here because uh, I think we do need to grab some stuff. So this is uh, November 29th, 1967. So this is a couple years after the mansion was built, and this is uh, written by Trevor himself. Um, First, I didn't want to believe my eyes, but that familiar high-heeled shoe in the corridor, it was like Reflex, one name came to mind, Jessica. I don't want to believe they share the same fate. So he was, before this place became operational and became part of a lab and all that stuff, uh, it was just this mansion that uh, Oswald E. Spencer had, and it was like his home away from home. And uh, and he, uh, and he uh, trapped Trevor in it, and Trevor died. <laughs> like, while his family was being, you know... Um, you know, uh, injected with T virus stuff and, and becoming test subjects. And he had to hear them through the walls, like crying for him and, and everything. And it's a really tragic story. It's, it's really heartbreaking and, and really dark actually. Um, and it's, it's a real, it's a real shame. George Trevor. I always forget his first name, but yeah. And he's like, forgive me. I'm sorry. I played a, a part of this. My ego got the best of me. Just a really tragic uh, story. Um, and this is his tombstone uh, that, you know, I guess, you know, Oswald Spencer or someone 
put in here later uh, or put in here to taunt him when he was buried alive he found his way down into this hole and he saw that tombstone and and it was like a sick joke played on him it's really screwed up shows you that oswald e. spencer is just a monster um in the chat martian cat it says checking in hey martian cat thank you for checking in how are you tonight i hope you are doing well thank you for popping in um all right we gotta get to ah oh, dang it am i poisoned no okay Phew. yeah the movies just get more ridiculous and more ridiculous I, I, I can't i can't even stomach the movies that much anymore that fifth one was four was already pretty bad but five was really bad i mean it's like hey here's a guy named chris redfield it's like that's that's it he's just a guy named chris redfield they found him they found him in a jail cell and we're even only taking his word that he's Chris Redfield because because they played the the amnesia trope again. Um, we could we, we with his sister. We were like, is he really Chris Redfield? Um, or is like we that was the bummer of it. Like it was a real bummer that we didn't even know if he was really Chris um, until like she got her memory back. Like kind of towards the end of the movie and it was such a pointless thing too uh it, it just was so pointless because she remembers him for two seconds and then the movie ends and you're like okay so and because the movies i think they do everything they can to avoid their actors and actresses to really emote any kind of emotion they just want everyone to be a badass they're just like hey just talk really gruff and be a badass and that's your that's all you have to do to be in these movies I have a lot of, um, I guess, hopes for Resident Evil 7. I really want it to be a good game. So far, what I've seen, it looks pretty cool. I mean, I, I really am digging it. I had a lot of fun. I don't know if, if any of you guys checked out my YouTube channel. I actually played the, the demo, the tech demo, at Comic-Con with the VR helmet on. The reason we did it was because I, I honestly, I um, I can't handle really 3D, you know, being a, a brain aneurysm survivor like 3D and stuff like that, it like really messes with my head and I get dizzy, motion sickness, all this stuff. So we honestly thought I was gonna throw up. So I was like, let's let's ask these guys if they'll let us film me playing with the VR helmet on and you know, maybe I'll throw up on camera and it'll be kind of funny. And I know it's very mature for a 34 year old man to say, um, but uh, but I was kind of thinking like yeah I mean, it'll make a funny YouTube video and and obviously I would you know help clean up the mess or whatever. We played the VR helmet and I actually handled it fine, and so so we uh, so we filmed it all, and I had um, you know my reaction to it which was all genuine like I, I was really freaked out by it I, I really um, immersed myself in that demo. But now that I've written some stuff, there was a time where I did pitch a Resident Evil comic book series, but. Wildstorm and DC Comics, they kind of have the, they had the rights for a while. And I don't know if they still do, but Wildstorm did. And, uh, and Jim Lee had drawn like the covers of the initial ones, like the magazines, uh, when they first came out in the nineties. And then, uh, there was like five issues of them. And then, uh, and then they released like a series that when Resident Evil 5 came out and it was supposed to be a prequel to the Resident Evil 5 game. And it, and it set up the BSAA and it had some like new members and stuff. And it wasn't very great. I mean, it wasn't, 
um, I, I applaud them for trying to add a new story to the mythos, but it really didn't hook me as a fan. So I pitched them the series that, uh, and normally when you pitch a comic book series, we, we used to get this a lot at the company I worked for. And, uh, you know, tr try to, when you pitch, try to pitch something that has a beginning, middle, and end. Because a lot of com comic book companies, they do hope that they're, the comics they make become movies, you know, because that's where the money is. There's not a lot of money in comics. So they kind of hope that they can translate them somehow. So if you're going to pitch a series, don't pitch like a 50 issue series. Um, and I learned this from my own experience too. So in Resident Evil, I, I pitched a something that I said could go 50 issues. And it was basically from Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 5. And then also a prequel zero issue that showed the origins of Oswald E. Spencer and the beginning of the Umbrella Corporation. And uh, and then and then we sprinkled in some like Resident Evil zero moments into it too. Um, but I had pitched all this stuff and, and uh, it was just, it was too big because you never know if a, like they've had zero success with their Resident Evil comic books. Like they just never sold well. And uh, and so me coming in, an unknown writer pitching a a 50 issue Resident Evil series was just like insane to them. They were like, dude, you're absolutely nuts. Cause it ma that makes no sense for us to do that. And uh, they were right. They were right. So yeah, if you're out there and you, and you wanna pitch stories and you wanna get into comics, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that there's a, you don't need to pitch a 50 story art. Which way is he going? Oop, there he is. Oh, he's going to get me. He is totally going to get me. Ah, oh, damn it. I knew it. All right. Um, Martian Cat says, right on. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, let's keep our fingers crossed that it's called The King of Neverland. It's a sequel to Peter Pan. And we kickstarted it, and uh, I'm a little late on writing it because I keep rewriting it. Uh, I had a pretty good draft of it done when we did the Kickstarter, but then we went over on the Kickstarter, so I, I added a second book. And we're going to do like a series of them. And uh, so I added a second book that is kind of like filled with um, short stories of origins of the, um, of the characters in the book because we invent some new characters and stuff. Yeah, Barry, you got some Jill, splaining to do, sir. Alive. I was worried because I thought you were. Don't mansplain me, dude. Start talking. You're being a jerk, and I've got down. your gun now. I didn't want to do it. Believe me, I can explain. Don't lie to me. It's pretty interesting. Like, be, like I said, it, it was interesting story decisions to put Barry on Jill's story. Because if, if he has a connection with Chris, the emotion of Chris, um, you know, being betrayed by Barry would have, would have been greater. But then at the same time, maybe no time Barry talk. wouldn't have Jill, betrayed Chris. You know, like he... Uh, oh, what should I do? Yes or no? 